Welcome to Mythical, the podcast that explores myths, fairy tales, legends, and folklore from around the world. I'm the narrator. This season, we're taking a look at the fairy tales from the Brothers Grimm. In today's episode, I will be reading Little Red Cap. I will begin this story, as all good stories should, with Once Upon a Time. Once upon a time, there was a sweet little maiden. Whoever laid eyes upon her couldn't help but love her. But it was her grandmother who could never give the child enough. One day, she made her a present, a small red velvet cap. And since it was so becoming, and the maiden always wanted to wear it, people only called her Little Red Cap. I do wonder what her given name is, though. One day, her mother said to her, Come, Little Red Cap. Take this piece of cake and bottle of wine and bring them to your grandmother. That is a super awesome gift basket. I would love that at any time, whether I were sick or not. She's sick and weak, and this will strengthen her. Oh, if only wine really did strengthen you. It just makes me tired. <laughs> Be nice and good and greet her from me. Go directly there and don't stray from the path. Otherwise, you'll fall and break the glass, and your grandmother will get nothing. So basically, Little Red Cap is clumsy, and if she strayed from the path, she would immediately trip and fall over something and break the glass of wine. Little bits of character trait that you get from dialogue. Look at that. However, Little Red Cap didn't know what a wicked sort of an animal he was, and was not afraid of him. Alrighty, in this story, wolves, not necessarily dangerous. Hello, little girl. Good day, little red cap. Thank you kindly, wolf. Where are you going so early, little red cap? To grandmothers. You never tell a stranger where you're going. It's just begging them to follow you. And hello, this story is Little Red Riding Hood, so obviously he's going to follow her. What are you carrying under your apron? Cake and wine. My grandmother's sick and weak. And yesterday, we baked this cake, so it will help her get well. Where does your grandmother live, little redcap? Well, don't tell, don't tell him where. About a quarter of an hour from here in the forest. Her house is under the three big oak trees. Oh, you are giving him navigational clues, too? Landmarks? You're giving him landmarks? You can tell it by the hazel bushes, said little redcap. Yep, all the landmarks. The wolf thought to himself, what a juicy morsel she'll be for me. Now how am I going to catch her? Then he said, Listen, little red cap, haven't you seen the beautiful flowers growing in the forest? Why don't you look around? I believe you haven't even noticed how lovely the birds are singing. You march along as if you were going straight to school in the village, and yet it is so delightful out here in the woods. Little Redcap looked around and saw that the sun had broken through the trees and that the woods were full of beautiful flowers. So she thought to herself, If I bring Grandmother a bunch of flowers, she'd certainly like that. It's still early, and I'll arrive on time. So she plunged into the woods to look for flowers, and each time she plucked one, she thought she saw another, even prettier flower and ran after it, going deeper and deeper into the forest. But the wolf went straight to the grandmother's house and knocked at the door. Even her mother told her not to stray from the path. She hasn't broken the glass, so that's good. Stopping and smelling the roses is good, but she's on a mission. Her grandmother's sick. Go visit your grandmother. Who's there? Little red cap, I've brought you some cake and wine. Open up. Just lift the latch, the grandmother called. I'm too weak and can't get up. The wolf lifted the latch, and the door swung open. Then he went straight to the grandmother's bed and gobbled her up. Next, he took her clothes, put them on along with her nightcap, lay down in her bed, and drew the curtains. So did he put on new clothes that were in the closet, or did he put on the clothes that the grandmother was wearing? Because then that begs the question, did he undress the grandmother first, or did they fly off while he was eating her? The nightcap makes sense because that would be on her head and that would just fly up when he grabbed her. 
Meanwhile, Little Redcap had been running around and looking for flowers, and only when she had as many as she could carry did she continue on the way to her grandmother. The flowers are a nice sentiment, a nice thought, though they really would brighten up any house. She was puzzled when she found the door open, and as she entered the room it seemed so strange inside that she thought, Oh my, how frightened I feel today, and usually I like to be at grandmother's. If I go anywhere and a door is open that it's not not supposed to be, I immediately think of all, of all of those horror movies where you go in and either someone's dead or the killer's in there. So you just don't. I would see an open door and I would turn right around, especially if your grandmother is sick and weak. Then she went to the bed and drew back the curtains. There lay her grandmother with her cap pulled down over her face, giving her a strange appearance. Oh, grandmother, what big ears you have. Oh, grandmother, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with. Oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have. The better to see you with. Oh, grandmother, what big hands you have. The better to grab you with. Oh, grandmother, what a terribly big mouth you have. The better to eat you with. No sooner did the wolf say that than he jumped out of bed and gobbled up poor little red cap, and after the wolf had the fat chunks in his body, he lay down in bed again, fell asleep, and began to snore very loudly. The huntsman happened to be passing by the house and thought to himself, The way the old lady's snoring, you'd better see if something's wrong. He went into the room, and when he came to the bed, he saw the wolf lying in it. He had been searching for the wolf a long time, and thought that the beast had certainly eaten the grandmother. Perhaps she can still be saved, he said to himself. I wouldn't shoot. Huntsman's got a brain. So he took some scissors and cut open the wolf's belly. Those are some pretty, pretty uh, heavy-duty scissors. And after he made a couple of cuts, he saw the little red cap shining forth, and after he made a few more cuts, the girl jumped out and exclaimed, Oh, how frightened I was! It was so dark in the wolf's body. The wolf has a pretty big job. He can just swallow people whole. And he didn't even enjoy the taste, and he was saying how juicy they looked. Soon the grandmother emerged alive. Little Redcap quickly fetched some large, heavy stones, and they filled the wolf's body with them. When he awoke and tried to run away, the stones were so heavy that he fell down at once and died. Cutting him open didn't even wake him up or kill him. It's a heavy-duty wolf. All three were delighted. The huntsman skinned the fur from the wolf. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine that Little Redcap had brought. And Little Redcap thought to herself, Never again will you stray from the path by yourself and go into the forest when your mother has forbidden it. Yes, good girl. Listen to your mama. It's also been told that Little Redcap returned to her grandmother one day to bring some baked goods. Another wolf spoke to her and tried to entice her to leave the path, but this time Little Redcap was on her guard. She went straight ahead and told her grandmother that she had seen the wolf, that he had wished her good day, but that he had had such a mean look in his eyes that he would have eaten me if we hadn't been on the open road. Good girl. Learning from your past experiences. Not all characters do that. Come, we'll lock the door so he can't get in. Soon after, the wolf knocked and cried out, Open up, grandmother. It's a little red cap, and I've brought you some baked goods. But they kept quiet and didn't open the door. So the wicked wolf circled the house several times and finally jumped on top of the roof. He waited and waited. He wanted to wait till evening when Little Redcap would go home. He intended to sneak after her and eat her up in the darkness. But the grandmother realized what he had in mind. In front of the house was a big stone trough, and she said to the child, Fetch the bucket, Little Redcap. I cooked sausages yesterday. Get the water they were boiled in and pour it into the trough. Little Redcap kept carrying the water until she had filled the big, big trough. Then the smell of sausages reached the nose of the wolf. He sniffed and looked down. Finally, he stretched his neck so far that he could no longer keep his balance on the roof. 
he began to slip from the roof and fell right into the big trough and drowned. Then Little Redcap went happily and safely to her home. The end. The moral of today's story is even though the flowers may look really, really pretty, if some creepy wolf comes along and tells you to go pick them and stray from your task, don't listen. Wolves are dangerous. Today's story was read from the complete first edition, the original folk and fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm, translated and edited by Jack Zipes. Little Redcap was actually told to the Grimm brothers by two different people. They combined the two stories into one. So the first story with the huntsman and the wolf getting stones stuffed into his stomach, that was one complete story. And then they heard the other story with the second wolf as its own individual story. And the brothers thought to combine them and have the story about a wolf drowning in a trough as a sort of sequel to the first one, rather than two different tales. In the later version of Little Red Cap, I love this because the mom gives even more instruction to Little Red Cap. She tells her to go early in the morning so that it doesn't get too hot, which is always good advice. But I love this part. She says that when you enter her room, her room being the grandmother's, don't forget to say good morning and don't go peeping in all of the corners. Little Red Cap has been to grandmother's house several times before, I'm sure. So I'm sure she's seen a lot. But don't go peeping, because Little Red Cap, you know her, she's a peeper. While the Brothers Grimm did edit the later version of, of Little Red Cap, there aren't as many changes in this story as in the story from the previous episode, Cinderella. This one just changes some... It just gives a little more dialogue, a little more of the internal thoughts. The huntsman initially, initially takes aim at the wolf with his gun, but then decides not to because grandmother might still be in there. When grandmother comes out, she's alive, but barely breathing. That's a new tidbit. The huntsman calls the wolf, you old sinner, which I mean, I just think is funny. In the second half of the story with the second wolf that drowns instead of gets weighed down by stones, that wolf has a name. That wolf is named Greyhead. The first wolf doesn't have a name in either of these versions. And what causes the wolf in the second story to drown is that he smells these sausages and he wants them so badly, but he can't think that those are Little Red Cap or the grandmother cooking or something. And he's ready to give up his position on the roof for some sausages rather than for a Little Red Cap and grandmother. He must have been really hungry and would have eaten basically anything at this point. Thank you for joining me today. If you have a fairy tale you would like read aloud, you can email the show at mythicalthepodcast at gmail.com and follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at mythicalpodcast for updates and behind the scenes and clues to each week's episode. I hope you enjoyed today's story. I'm the narrator, and this is Mythical. Mythical.